Samsung's new flagship phone, the Galaxy S5, has landed. Here we take a look at some of its key features and compare it to its predecessor, the Galaxy S4. As you'd expect, the S5 has an improved processor and it also has a larger display than the S4. Its camera has been boosted too, from 30 megapixels on the S4 to 16 megapixels on the S5. Both, however, share the same plastic finish, which is hardly premium, though the S5 does feature a heart rate monitor. More on that later. The S5's new version of TouchWiz is a lot less cluttered than its predecessor's version too, and, thankfully, comes without a lot of the bloatware that Samsung products were famous for. There isn't much change when it comes to the Galaxy S5's display. It has the same resolution as its predecessor, and at 5.1 inches, it's only 0.1 of an inch larger. However, when we looked at the S5 and the S4 side by side, you can see, at default settings, that the S5 screen is a little brighter and that little bit sharper. Its camera, with its super fast autofocus, can capture shots in just 0.3 seconds. This is especially useful when you're taking pictures of your family and friends, meaning you needn't just leave them there smiling away whilst your camera takes an age to focus. Then there's also the selective focus mode. This is great when you've got two subjects, one in the foreground and one in the background, and you want to make one blurred and the other clear. I've been really impressed by how quickly the S5 takes photographs. But not only that, the amount of options available to you when it comes to editing them afterwards. It's going to be really interesting to see how the S5 measures up against the best compact cameras the next time we run that lab test. Now, a major claim from Samsung is that the S5 can stretch its last 10% of battery power to last for a further 24 hours. It does this by turning off your phone's non-essential functions, and even turning your screen black and white. Now, we can't tell you for sure if this works as advertised yet, but we'll leave the final verdict to our expert lab tests. The S5 also comes with a fingerprint scanner that's able to register three of your fingers at once, so I'd suggest using one finger from each hand so you can open your phone with either. And you can also link your phone to your PayPal account, so you can pay on something like eBay, for example, with the swipe of just a finger. I found that the fingerprint scanner on the S5 isn't always as responsive as it could be. For example, you need to have your finger really flush with the screen when you're holding it down, or else it might not always recognise your fingerprint. When you're in a hurry, this can be really irritating if all you want to do is open an email quickly. The S5 also comes with an improved version of the S Health Fitness app. This works in conjunction with the S5's heart rate monitor to give you a more rounded view of your current exercise regime. Now I think the heart rate monitor is something of a gimmick. It requires you to be absolutely still when it takes your pulse. Now really in the middle of a, a jog or if you're doing some sit-ups or something and you really want to get an idea of your heart rate, it's not the best to suddenly be stopping waiting around for the heart rate monitor to finish and then resume your exercise. So I've been using the S5 for a few days now and I've come away really impressed. It's certainly a step up from the S4. What I don't like about it though is its finish. It's a little bit cheap and plasticky and just doesn't look as good as some of its rivals. What I have been really impressed by though is not just the camera on the S5 but also its ultra power saving mode which should come in really handy. We've got the S5 going through our labs right now, so expect a full extensive write-up of the phone on our website soon. Click the links below for our comparison of the iPhone 5S and the Galaxy S5, a look at the HTC One M8, and the latest post on the Samsung Gear smartwatches.